Hey guys, it's good to be back in this studio. I had a great week over in Kauai. I wore my sunscreen so I didn't get sunburned, which is awesome. And now we are looking at an eventful week in the market again. We had a couple of earnings today that I wanna jump into. So we had Big Bear AI and Archer Aviation who reported after the bell. Both of them, at least as of this point in time, are down a little bit after hours. I also wanna look at Quantum because Quantum actually had a nice day today, including IonQ Rigetti. CLSQ had a nice day for the first time in quite a while. And we're gonna look at six total stocks. We're gonna to try to do this in about 15 minutes. I'm just happy to be home and happy to see the market start in a strong way, especially with quantum stocks. So if you like content like this and you like to keep yourself and other retail investors informed, make sure you hit that like button, absolutely obliterate it. And let's jump right in. So the July inflation report is coming out tomorrow and it's expected to show that there are tariff pressures that are persistent. We'll see that data coming out tomorrow before the bell, I believe. So the major indices actually fell a little bit today. The S&P was down a quarter of a point. The Dow's down almost a half a percent and the Nasdaq was down a third of a percent. Quantum did really nicely today with INQ actually waking up a little bit. This is kind of the move that I was expecting to happen last week, but there was some delay. So you can be right, but not have enough time. And that often happens when you play options. So my strikes were at the $44 point and it didn't reach that Friday, but today it had a 7% day and actually at one point in the trading session was above 46. So we'll look at that chart. Seal SQ had a nice day, Rigetti going into earnings tomorrow. We'll talk about that. And D-Wave also had a nice day. Overall, the market was fairly flat or saw some sell-off. So wider tech saw some gray boxes here. Amazon was red, Apple was red. Apple's been pretty hot lately. I think they're waiting. the wider market is definitely waiting on that core inflation data. So I saw this article and I briefly wanted to talk about this. So scientists say quantum's ultimate advantages may yet to be imagined. I did post a tweet about this this morning, but basically the paper outlines five keystone properties of true advantage, predictability, typicality, robustness, verifiability, usefulness, and divides quantum advantage into four realms, computation, learning, sense and sensing, cryptography, communication, and space advantages. Basically with quantum, we have our known advantages, but there's like this saying, you only know what you know, you don't always know what you don't know. So that's where there's the unpredictable advantages. And I, I thought as reading through this article, one of the things that stood out to me was you're talking about how quantum itself could help determine whether there's a quantum advantage to be found in certain fields or certain applications. So definitely a great article. I recommend going over and looking at that. I think there's a lot that is intangible about quantum at this point in time that we really don't know how to quantify because there's no precedent for this technology. Okay, speaking of quantum, let's jump into Rigetti. So Rigetti Quantum Computing is going into earnings tomorrow and it's doing quite well. It's holding now above this $15 point for a solid amount of time. Rigetti was actually trading between about $15 and $7. After the quantum crash, it had dropped all the way down to $7. Double bottom there, bottomed again in March and April. And it's been in a steady climb since then. And we had the 36 qubit chip news. And we also had have earnings as catalyst both this week. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, Rigetti announced in a recent press release that they have a 99.5% median two qubit gate fidelity on its modular 36 qubit system. It's composed of chiplets. So four of these nine qubit chips tiled together. And this is an approach that NVIDIA has been doing with their chips like Blackwell as well. And, and some of their larger chips is they're actually not able to fit everything onto one chip. So they're building multiple chips and linking them together. So this 36 qubit chip 
is planned to be launched on August 15th and we have earnings on August 12th. So this is a pretty huge week if you're a Rigetti fan. And what are we looking at as far as price going into earnings? Well, we are sitting right on the doorstep of all time highs. So back here during the quantum frenzy, when all the stocks were pumping, there was just this euphoria, the bubble popped and there was wider sell off and it came down. Now we're kind of just, we're here, but we're here with more meat on the bone. We, we have more hardware and not only that, in that very same press announcement, we also got from Rigetti that they plan to release a 100 qubit chiplet based system at a 99.5% median two qubit gate fidelity before the end of 2025. So the market, since it's forward lurk looking, has to start pricing in, okay, well, we're gonna get a 36 qubit chip, we're gonna get a 100 qubit chip, Rigetti, it's got to maybe have uh, more of a price tag associated with it. And we're seeing the appreciation in the stock, especially recently. We've seen it touch 17 and a half dollars a few times. I wouldn't be surprised at all if we if we retest that 17 and a half. The last couple earnings, we can see these red earnings here in TradingView. They weren't great earnings. No one's expecting Rigetti to come and blow things out of the water. The nice thing about Rigetti is their operating expenses and their OPEX is pretty flat. It, as an investor, you can kind of predict what Rigetti is doing, and they're not just spending a bunch of money with no end in sight. They did do some dilution earlier this year, which put them in a better cash position, which will also show up in the balance sheet for Rigetti this coming quarterly. So looking forward to Rigetti earnings, looking forward to what happens with the stock price. I think we could definitely, we're definitely within reach of this $20.84 all time high. We're just right on the doorstep we have. We're in this kind of rare air with Rigetti already building price more so than we had in the past. And we're just on the doorstep of all time highs. Okay, Ion Q. So Ion Q had this explosion upward today. And this was kind of maybe a delayed earnings move because they did do great in revenue. They had an 11% rally and we've seen IonQ have rallies like this, but then just not stop and go 38% to the day. So I think some of us in, in the Discord were thinking, man, is this is this going to retest its all time high today? But in reality, if we zoom out, had that 30% day, it got rejected off 48.68. And if we're realistic about what's been happening with INQ is really it gets close to 47, 48, and then it goes back down. So is this time different? We shall see, because we're going to need to break that 48, 68 number and get out of this zone. A uh, very bullish indication for INQ, and I know a lot of traders would be looking at this is if we got a close above 48.68. Then if we look to the left, we only have a couple trading days of data above 48.68 before we're testing all time highs. And INQ, there's a lot to be excited about. Their earnings weren't the best, but they weren't horrible either. They had a surprise on revenue, but they missed on EPS. They had a lot more, uh, they, they had a negative surprise on earnings, but a positive surprise on revenue. So a little bit mixed there. Okay, Seal SQ. So Seal SQ is a stock we've been covering and following. I have multiple in-depth interviews on the channel about Seal SQ. Seal SQ has come all the way from, if we go back to March, a $2.35 stock, and it's gone all the way up 100% gain to a $4.61 stock where it was rejected and it's been in a bearish downtrend ever since about late june it's lost it's posted lower high higher excuse me lower highs and lower lows consistently so the stock has moved down but today it had actually a pretty nice candle so if we just look at the five day you can kind of see the price action some volume came in the rsi got a little bit overbought and maybe 
seal sq found a bottom at 269 it could make sense from a technical standpoint for me for this ticker and i have many thousands of shares in seal sq i'm not too worried about the stock going down or up i look at it as a buying opportunity for me this is a long-term play and it's going to take time for that thesis to play out it's going to take time for people to figure out the value of what seal sq does and the need and then i think when that need comes i think that it's going to come really fast and i just want my portfolio to be to be positioned to take advantage of that okay d wave so d wave had an earnings that wasn't horrible it wasn't great i think a lot of the bears or the shorts were expecting that this was going to push the stock down considerably and even on my channel even on the quantum bull I told you I had protective puts on this at the $15 strike and it didn't actually move too much, which was surprising. And it's kind of held above this 1679. It's validated off of 1628 a couple of times here. In fact, that's probably a level we could add a line there. So really, if we just look to the left, D wave has been fairly strong. It's, it's moved out of the tens. It's moved, it's gapped up, and then it's really held its own. It came down and tested this 1356 one time. That was one buying opportunity lately for D-Wave. I think a lot of people, including myself, were expecting something like this with that quarter over quarter revenue. That didn't happen. It kind of held strong. And not only did it hold strong, but there's kind of this uptrend within an uptrend with D-Wave. And we know that D-Wave can impress investors they can come out with new partnerships new system sales new research at any time so i think 2025 still has a lot of potential left for d wave so big bear ai sad story today came out with a quarterly loss of 0.06 per share versus the consensus of 0.07 but their revenue was weighed down. So they posted a revenue of 32.4 million, missing the consensus by 20%. This compares to a year ago revenue of 39.78 million. They also reduced their forward guidance. So as much as I love Big Bear, really, really, really rough earnings. Um, they're down essentially in a lot of conceivable categories. And this is unfortunate because the stock has really got this kind of like cult like following lately. But after hours, we can see a pretty significant move down to the $5. Now, every time I've talked about Big Bear on this channel, I've always said it's possible Big Bear could make a sharp move down at any time, set a stop loss of in this name. And you're going to realize some of this loss when the market opens tomorrow, that's kind of the nature of the game we play here. So if we take a look at what that move is, I have extended trading hours off. We can kind of see this blue line here. And I, I am still processing the earnings. I'm still processing kind of what we saw, but this was really bad even by a big bear standard. So we have uh, a 30% move, which according to this sort of rising support we've had, um, this rising uptrend since March, that would actually break through that uptrend. So could we be looking at a situation with Big Bear where we just kind of come back down to these high fours and, and the sentiments just washed out until the next catalyst? This is the thing. The Big Bear is squarely on the radar of so many investors at this point that yes, this was a bad earnings and this was bad news, but one headline one partnership one deal and this stock could explode it's done it before it's done it uh multiple times in the past big bear has explosive opportunities so really if you can't handle the heat with big bear then you got to get out of the kitchen because this one this one's a hot potato and it's probably going to move down into the fives if we get a little closer i mean it already is in the fives uh, after market, um, we close at seven. So what what I would have on your radar for some levels to keep an eye on is really we had 
a good amount of price history on the way up at this 447 to 363. I'd get pretty worried if it dropped below $3. I don't see that happening, but you never know. We're going to, we're just going to need to see how the market reacts and absorbs this, this, uh, earnings. And personally, I may consider adding to my position. I already have a couple thousand shares of Big Bear and I believe in the long-term thesis still, but the numbers, we have to be honest with ourselves. Those numbers are really bad. If something like, if a company like Palantir came and said, we have decelerating revenue year over year and we're not giving guidance, Palantir would go down like $100 overnight or something. So just because it's Big Bear doesn't mean that it's immune to being punished for poor earnings and we can't get irrationally uh, connected to, to stocks. So you got to do what you got to do. Of course, you got to do your own diligence. For me, I'm still long on the name for the time being. And Archer. So Archer had a really nice shareholder letter and they're building roughly six of these aircraft. They're at various stages. They have a balance sheet with $1.7 billion of cash, which is amazing. And Archer is going to be the, the 20 LA 2028 Olympic Games official electric air taxi. So they're down after hours because they are burning through cash and they, um, without going too deep into Archer earnings, because I, I, I know this video is getting longer in the eVTOL space. Joby sold an aircraft, Archer hasn't yet. So Archer has some work to do to get their certifications, to get their sales. And when that happens, I fully believe Archer is going to move up as a stock and as a company. Um, and just going back to some price history, when was the last time we saw Archer at 944, which is where it sits after hours. In fact, it sits, if we look once again at 916, when was the last time we had an opportunity to buy at 916? So probably late 2024, earlier 2025, this was about the price range. It's moved up to about a 10. So Archer really has been sideways money. If we, if we take out the trade aspect of this and we just look at the the average here, it's been around nine and a half dollars, ten dollars. I don't think that's going to change very much. There could be a little bit of volatility, but I think ultimately it's going to hang around here. I don't think that it's also going to move up either because there wasn't anything impressive in the earnings. I could be wrong. I hope that Archer moves up and reclaims this 12, 13, 14 dollar level, but probably not enough in the earnings report. Anyway, guys, that is all I have for you. If you would like to stay up to date on the markets and connect with a bunch of like-minded investors who invest in quantum AI space and all kinds of tech stocks, I invite you to come over and join our Discord. It's $14.99 a month on YouTube and it's just via the YouTube subscription. So you just click the plus button on the page and join. Would love to see you over there. Also drop me an email, majid at the quantum bowl.com if you have any questions. So in New York City, I'll be attending the quantum and AI conference from October 19th to the 21st. They have offered a 20% discount code. So if you are interested in going to this conference, let me know, majid at the quantum bowl.com. I'll get you a discount code for this. Or if you have any questions about channel memberships, let me know, majid at the quantum bowl.com. All right. Thanks everyone.